Hello out there. I'm Benny, and I'm super excited that you're checking out this video to learn TypeScript. TypeScript is an amazing language that can really level up your development skills, and I've been having a blast working with it since 2015. Back when I was working with my team at Wire, we launched large-scale applications using TypeScript. I've even had the chance to contribute to some of the coolest open source projects like VS Code, Axios, Material UI, Prettier, and of course, TypeScript itself. In addition, I've answered many questions on Stack Overflow. With that being said, you can be confident that you are in good hands. You'll be amazed at how TypeScript can simplify your development process and help you catch bugs early on. And the best part, you'll be in the pilot seat taking full control of your code and becoming the commander of your co-pilot. You don't need much to get started, just some basic knowledge of JavaScript. And what's that? You already have that? Fantastic. Then let's dive right in and get started. JavaScript is a beginner-friendly language for coding because it doesn't require additional tooling to get started. You can try it out directly in your browser by opening the JS console and typing in some code. In this example, I am creating a function called add where I will simply sum up two numbers. I can call this function with two arguments and get the result right away from the console. However, it's important to note that this function has limitations, such as failing if you enter parameters that are not numbers. Oh no! For instance, if we pass a string argument, we'll receive a mathematically incorrect result due to JavaScript's string concatenation feature. Using an object as an argument will result in a stringified version of the object combined with the other number. Attempting to access properties of an object that are undefined will trigger a type error. Forgetting to pass an argument will result in a non-existent number, commonly referred to as NAN, for not a number. Using an undeclared variable will result in a reference error. And if I try to call a function, which isn't actually a function, we'll get to see a not a function type error in the JavaScript console. I looked up on Stack Overflow to see if type errors are common in JavaScript, and I found over 80,000 results. I was curious about how recent the questions were and noticed that there were some being asked just minutes ago. It seems that a JavaScript developer is facing a type error every hour. This highlights the challenge of dynamic typing in real-world applications and emphasizes the need for a reliable and robust solution to handle type errors. So we have just seen the most common errors when working with JavaScript. You have to be very careful when handling parameters. While this may be easy to fix for simple examples, it can become difficult to manage for larger applications with multiple team members. This is where TypeScript comes in. Developed and maintained by Microsoft, TypeScript is a programming language that adds type safety to JavaScript. TypeScript informs you of errors during design time, which is when you're writing code. One may wonder, how does it do this? The TypeScript code that you write undergoes analysis by a compiler which detects errors. After the compiler is content with the code, it transforms the TypeScript code into JavaScript code. Throughout the development process, you'll encounter different stages design time, compile time, and runtime. Design time is when you write the code. Compile time is when the compiler analyzes your code and generates JavaScript. And runtime is when you execute your code in a browser or via a command line interface using Node or Deno. You might be wondering why all of this overhead is necessary, and why not simply use another programming language like PHP or Python? The answer is simple web applications natively support JavaScript. Attempting to execute Python or PHP code in your browser will not work. Therefore, you must use a programming language that compiles down to JavaScript. TypeScript is the best fit for this job because it is a superset of JavaScript, meaning you can do everything in TypeScript that you can do in JavaScript, and more. If you're already familiar with JavaScript, you can use your existing code and enhance it with TypeScript, making it a perfect language for web applications. Furthermore, TypeScript is a multi-paradigm language, so you can write your code in a functional or object-oriented style. The easiest way to practice TypeScript programming is using the TypeScript Playground, which can be found on TypeScript's official homepage, typescriptlang.org. When placing our JavaScript code example into the Playground, 
we'll immediately see errors because TypeScript requires us to add a type annotation for our parameters. The default type assigned is any, which can be seen by hovering over the highlighted errors. This means that the types for A and B can be anything, which doesn't provide us with any additional type safety, but we now have the ability to change that. By adding the type number, we can tell TypeScript to warn us if we try to pass anything other than numbers into our add function. This is why TypeScript is called TypeScript. It's built on the concept of types, which will help us to avoid mistakes as seen before when using JavaScript. In the TypeScript playground, we can actually see what our TypeScript code looks like when compiled to JavaScript. In technical terms, this process is also called transpiling, because we convert our code from a high-level programming language, TypeScript, to another high-level programming language, namely JavaScript. Alternatively, some people may use the term compiling, although it is a term that is often used when converting from a high-level language to a low-level language. In the TypeScript playground, we can also see a tsconfig option that allows us to customize the compiler to meet the requirements of our application. In the following chapter, we'll explore these settings and learn how to install TypeScript locally so that we're no longer dependent on the TypeScript playground. Here are some questions to test your understanding. What is a common error showing up when working with JavaScript? What is the core concept of TypeScript? What is the benefit of using TypeScript over Python? Can you explain the difference between design time and runtime? Why is TypeScript known as a superset of JavaScript? What is transpiling? If you need a quick refresher to find the correct answer, simply replay this video at the chapter that corresponds to the question. Before we move forward, let me showcase a few reasons why it's worthwhile to learn TypeScript. In my TypeScript course, you'll discover numerous features that set TypeScript apart as a superior alternative to JavaScript, including robust type checking that identifies errors prior to runtime, auto-completion when writing code in your IDE, basic linting rules such as detecting unused variables and parameters, const assertions to prevent side effects when using functional programming, class decorators for dependency injection, built-in language support for JSX and TSX, down-leveling for converting modern JavaScript to older JavaScript runtimes, polymorphism through class inheritance and interfaces for object-oriented programming, compatibility with various module systems, for instance, CommonJS and ESM, and customizable output formatting, such as formatting end-of-line sequences. As you can see, there are already 10 compelling reasons to learn TypeScript, and it's okay if some of them are unfamiliar to you at this point. Keep following the series to explore more and continue on this learning journey. Together, we will unlock TypeScript's full potential and become experts in this powerful programming language.